the office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. Kevin McCarthy is no longer Speaker of the House after losing the majority in a House vote on Tuesday. For better or for worse, McCarthy's term was historic. He had one of the longest confirmations in U.S. history, one of the shortest tenures in his position, and now is the first person to ever get voted out of the job. He only lasted nine months. I do not regret negotiating. Our government is designed to find compromise. I don't regret my efforts to build coalitions and find solutions. I was raised to solve problems, not create them. So I may have lost a vote today, but as I walk out of this chamber, I feel fortunate to have served the American people. McCarthy got his position as speaker only after making tons of concessions to Republican hardliners who were against his nomination. These included the ability for any single representative to call a vote for his removal at any time. Representative Matt Gates, who has been publicly against McCarthy from before he even got the job, led the vote for the speaker's removal. According to Gates, McCarthy has not honored promises to curb spending. He's especially mad that McCarthy worked with Joe Biden to raise the debt ceiling over the summer and collaborated with Democrats to avoid a government shutdown this past weekend. Congressman, hold on a second. You're, Congress saying, you're saying that nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. Can you talk about including yourself, about seven Republicans compared to about 200 and some odd Republicans who actually do trust him. Well, as it turns out, getting 200 Republicans to trust you isn't enough to stay speaker. It's the benefit of this country that we have a better speaker of the House than Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy couldn't keep his word. He made an agreement in January regarding the way Washington would work, and he violated that agreement. But McCarthy believes that Gates' agenda against him may be more personal than political especially since he was part of an ethics investigation into Gates in the last Congress. He never voted for me. He's the one that challenged. He's the one that wanted to have this rule. He's the one that told the conference that he would never use it, but he was going to use it regardless whatever happened. He's got personal things in his life that he has challenges with. That's fine. But he knows exactly. He's been, he, he's been blaming me for, some, for an ethics complaint against him that happened in the last Congress. I have nothing to do with it. He wants me to try to wipe that away. I'm not going to do that. That's illegal. And you know what? If some way I lose my job because I uphold the law, because I uphold uh, the continuity of government, so be it. I'm just going to do what's right for the American people and keep working towards that direction. Republicans only have a four-person majority in the House right now. Eight Republicans and all the Democrats voted in favor of removing McCarthy. In a statement released by Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, Democrats were not supporting McCarthy because he made concessions to the far right rather than partnering with Democrats during his confirmation, allowed far-right Republicans to avoid compromise at every turn, and led an impeachment against President Joe Biden. Our Republican colleagues who claim to be more traditional to break from the extremists in the chaos, in the dysfunction, in the extremism. We are ready, willing, and able to work together with our Republican colleagues, but it is on them to join us to move the Congress and the country forward. Even though he said that he would never give up, McCarthy is not planning to seek re-election. I believe I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. I'll have the conference pick somebody else. I hope you realize that every day I did the job, regardless whether you underestimated me or not, I wanted to do it with a smile. Representative Patrick McHenry is currently leading as the interim speaker until voting for McCarthy's replacement starts up next week. As of right now, there are no clear candidates that seem likely to unite all of the Republicans and secure a nomination. So really, it's still anyone's game. Republican Majority Leader Steve Scalise may be the frontrunner to inherit McCarthy's seat and made calls following the Speaker's ousting. But the Louisiana representative is also undergoing treatments for blood cancer, which may make his election less certain. I'm a Scalise guy. Steve Scalise, I think, has earned the opportunity to lead this conference. As long as his doctors are good with it, as long as his wife Jennifer is good and his family good with it, uh, then I'm all in. Ohio Representative Jim Jordan has also announced his candidacy for Speaker of the House. He's not super likely to win over moderate votes, but he is known for his strong fundraising capabilities. I disagree with, you know, what, what took place, but those guys are friends of mine and, and uh, you know, I think that's the, that's the message I've been talking to my colleagues about is who can who can bring the eight in, in, into the, on, you know, part of the team, who can unite our team. I think I can do that. If I didn't think I could do that, I wouldn't run. Other 
calls have also gone out for representatives, including Hakeem Jeffries and Tom Emmer to run. And possibly most surprising, Representative Troy Nels is planning on filing paperwork to nominate former President Donald Trump for the speakership. And at least one other representative has said that he would support him too. The speaker does not technically have to be a sitting member of the House, even though that's never happened before. A lot of people have been talking about speaker. All I can say is we'll do whatever's best for the country and for the Republican Party. We have some great right people. I just want to say we have some great, great people. Would you take the job? A lot of people have asked me about it. I'm focused. You know, we're leading. I don't know you. I'm sure you don't read too much papers. But we're leading by like 50 points for president. You know, my focus is totally on that. If I can help them during the process, I would do it. We have some great people in the Republican Party that could do a great job as speaker. Until a new speaker is selected, the House is going to be at a standstill.